Hi everyone, it's Matthew here and welcome to the 16th stadium of the Skybet EFL Championship 2018-19 project. Portman Road has served as the home of Ipswich Town since 1884, but the club's roots go back a bit further than that. The club can trace its roots back to 16th of October 1878, being founded as an amateur side known as Ipswich AFC with local MP Thomas Cobbold serving as the club's first president having played football at Charterhouse School. George S. Sherrington and J.M. Franks were named joint captains and the club played its first match against Stoke Wanderers at Broom Hill on the 2nd of November, which Ipswich won 6-1. A 2-0 win over Harwich followed in the club's first ever away game. Ipswich AFC would go from strength to strength in the following years, recording their biggest ever victory in 1881 as they beat East Stamford 15-0. Josh Knight would also score a treble hat-trick in this game and both facts remain club records to this day. Having had to share a facility at Brooks Hall during the early days whose facilities amounted to nothing more than a crude shed used as a changing room, Ipswich finally moved to Portman Road in 1884. Three years after the move, the club would beat a team representing Ipswich School 2-1 to win the Suffolk Challenge Cup. The Cobbold family maintained their ties to the club during this time despite the sudden death of Vice President Nathaniel Fromantil Cobbold in 1886, with his nephew succeeding him. In 1888, Ipswich AFC would then merge with Ipswich Rugby Club to form what is now Ipswich Town, and despite having little success upon entry to the FA Cup in 1890, they would still win several local cups before finally venturing into league football by way of the Norfolk and Suffolk League in 1899. Ipswich would finish fourth in their first season before building on this with a runner-up finish in 1903, joining the South East Anglian League at the end of the 1902-03 season. After winning and then leaving the league in their inaugural season, they would continue in the Norfolk and Suffolk League, while also founding the Southern Amateur League in 1907. Their time in this league was not exactly spectacular, even suffering a 15-1 defeat to the Corinthians in 1910, before the outbreak of World War I saw Portman Road commandeered by the army, bringing a premature end to the 1914-15 season. Ipswich Town returned to football at Portman Road for the start of the 1920-21 season and the lack of football seems to have been a godsend for the club as they would be crowned champions of the Southern Amateur League a year later. They would go on to win the league a further three times in the following 15 years before becoming a founder member of the Eastern Counties Football League in 1935. Following the threat of a breakaway by rival factions in 1936 to form a new club under the name of Ipswich United, the club opted to turn professional and was subsequently elected to the Southern League ahead of the 1936-37 season, with former Irish international Mick O'Brien being installed as the first manager in professional football. Ipswich would win their first professional game at Portman Road, beating Tunbridge Wells Rangers 4-1, before going on to win the league in their maiden season. The tenure of O'Brien was short-lived as he would leave at the end of the season following the death of his wife, with Scott Duncan being brought in from Manchester United in November 1936. Following the 1937-38 season, Ipswich were elected to the Football League at the expense of Gillingham and would play their first season in the 3rd Division South. The outbreak of the Second World War in 1939 led to the suspension of football once more, with Ipswich's last game being a 1-1 draw with rivals Norwich City. Once football returned in 1948, Ipswich would manage three successive top eight finishes before finishing 17th in 1950, which remains the club's lowest ever league finish. The signing of striker Tom Garnis in 1951 added some much needed firepower and he would go on to finish as the club's top scorer for four seasons in a row, also becoming the first Ipswich player to score four times in a game. Ipswich would win promotion to the second division in 1954 but only managed a season there before relegation at the end of the following season, the only highlight being a fifth round FA Cup exit by Preston North End, then of the first division. By the time Scott Duncan resigned in 1955 he had managed over 500 games for the club. His successor was a novice in a managerial sense in the form of Alf Ramsey. Ramsey was a former England international and a two-time championship winner at Tottenham. It was an appointment lauded by the likes of Billy Wright, who claimed that by appointing Ramsey, Ipswich had paid a tremendous tribute to intelligent football. In his first season, Ipswich would finish third in Division 3 South, having scored 106 goals in 46 games, and would go on to win the title the following season in 1957. The emergence of local striker Ted Phillips was another plus for the club, as he would set the record of scoring 46 goals in a season, which also stands today. John Cavendish Cobbold became chairman at the end of the season and the club would establish themselves in the second division with three mid-table finishes and reaching the FA Cup fifth round again in 1959. 
Ipswich finally reached the first division following being crowned second division champions in 1961, following this up as first division champions at the first attempt in 1962, with Ray Crawford becoming the joint English and European top scorer, along with Derek Kevin at West Bromwich Albion. Matt Bullsby described this title winning side as one of the first division's most attractive sides. As champions, Ipswich ventured into Europe for the first time the following season where they would beat Maltese side Floriana 14-1 on aggregate in the first round, before they would suffer a second round exit against AC Milan. Ramsey left Portman Road in 1963 to take charge of England, with Ipswich just surviving relegation in the same season. Ray Crawford would eventually unveil a statue of his former manager outside Portman Road in 2000. Ipswich declined shortly afterwards and would find themselves relegated to the second division in 1964 under Jackie Milburn, having conceded a club record 121 goals in that season. Milburn left after his only season in charge and after returning to the first division four years later under Bill McGarry, he would leave to join Wolves in January 1969, being succeeded by Bobby Robson. After an unremarkable start to his tenure with Robson keeping Ipswich in the first division, the club finished fourth in 1973 as well as winning the Texaco Cup in a 4-2 win over Norwich. The fourth place finish was enough to see Ipswich back in Europe the following season by qualifying for the UEFA Cup, where they would see off the likes of Real Madrid before exiting at the quarter-final stage. Ipswich would be a successful side under Robson for much of the 1970s, having finished in the top half every season until 1978 when they would finish 18th. Despite Ipswich exiting the UEFA Cup at the third round stage to Barcelona that season, they would claim their first FA Cup by beating Arsenal 1-0 at Wembley with Roger Osborne scoring the winner. Ipswich stabilised in the league following the 1977-78 season, but they would be put on the map by 1981. Finishing second in the league and being eliminated from the FA Cup in the semi-finals, Ipswich made a real stride in Europe, beating a Michel Platini-led Saint Etienne 4-1 in France and a 2-0 aggregate win over FC Cologne to reach their first European final. A 5-4 aggregate victory over EZ Alkmaar saw Ipswich crown champions, but their title defence hit a wall the following season as they were eliminated by Aberdeen in the first round. Bobby Robson would leave in 1982, having led Ipswich to the highest of highs with a squad built around those brought through the academy, as Robson had only signed 14 players during his 13-year tenure. He would receive a statue outside the stadium in 2002, followed by being named an honorary president in 2006. While Ipswich remained a competitive cup side, league performances declined and Ipswich were in the second division once more by 1986. Despite missing out in the playoffs in 1986-87, Ipswich would become a competent second division side over the following few seasons, becoming one of the founder members of the Premier League in 1992. Ipswich would survive, just, in the Premier League until their relegation shortly after a 9-0 defeat to Manchester United in March 1995. David Sheepshanks became chairman the same year and the club would only spend a fleeting time in the first division before being promoted back to the Premiership in 2000, beating Barnsley 4-2 in the last Division 1 playoff final match held at Wembley before its redevelopment. Ipswich seemed like sure favourites to go back down the following season with their only signing in the summer being that of Herman Horiason for a club record £4 million. However, they would prove doubters wrong by finishing fifth and qualifying for the UEFA Cup once more, earning manager George Burley the Premier League Manager of the Year award. In 2001 or 2, Ipswich were ultimately relegated following poor league form after Christmas and were eliminated from Europe in the third round by AC Milan. Ipswich have yet to return to the top flight since and the seasons afterwards saw the club flirt with administration due to the drop in income before the club was bought by Marcus Evans in 2007 for £44 million. Despite numerous near misses with the playoffs, Ipswich were relegated to League One at the end of the 2018-19 season meaning they would be in the third tier for the first time since 1957. Evans would sell the club to US investment group Game Changer 20 Limited in April 2021, and following the appointment of Kieran McKenna, the club were promoted back to the championship as champions in 2023. With Ipswich now currently competing at the top end of the championship, could a return to England's top flight be on the horizon? Only time will tell. Portman Road's current capacity is 29,673, with Sir Bobby Robson and Sir Ralph Ramsey stand seating 7,500 and 6,362 respectively. I couldn't find any information with regards to the West Stand and the Cobbold Stand.
Work on Portman Road, Iron Minecraft began on August 19, 2023, starting on the Sir Bobby Robson stand before moving to the West stand. Work on the Cobalt stand began on August 29th, with Portman Road becoming my sole focus upon the completion of the den in September. By the end of September, and with two of the stands nearing completion, the pitch was laid out and finally work got underway on the Sir Ralph Ramsey stand. The completion of the stadium's floodlights meant that the stadium was topped out on October 15th at a height of 142 blocks. A lack of material meant that I had to do the hospitality suites in the West Stand to a custom design, but despite this the West Stand became the first stand completed on November 7th, with the Cobbold and Sir Bobby Robson stands following over the next two days. The completion of the Sir Ralph Ramsey stand was confirmed on November 15th, with the stadium being declared complete once the landscaping was finished at 1.50am on November 25th, 2023, after 98 days of work. A download link for this map is available in the description below if you'd like to have a look around in detail. And with that, I hope that you enjoy the rest of this video and let me know in the comments what you think of it. As always, like, share and subscribe and I will see you next time.